let's talk about the Department of Education for a moment. You're absolutely right, it's not in this document. And so when we say that our, our goal is to eliminate the Department of Education, we're of course vilified by saying you're anti-children and you hate educations. <laughs> we're not destroying the Department of Education, we're not going to dismantle the Department of Education because we're against education. We're going to dismantle the Department of Education so that every American child can actually get an education. <laughs> because, if you look at American test scores, American public schools, public schools were for most of our history the envy of the world. Diplomats would come from all across the planet, including France and, and, and England, Russia. They would come to see a land where every single citizen was fully educated, could read and write. If you've ever seen the test school, the, the, the seventh grade or ninth grade graduation test required for a kid in Kansas in 1900, I assure you there's not a person in this room who could get three out of those 20 questions correct. You had to answer in Greek, you had to perform trigonometry to graduate the ninth grade in, Canvas, in Kansas in 1903. And then along came the Department of Education. Now, some people would say maybe I'm just philosophically opposed to this. If you take a look at a chart, you will see Department of Education spending doing this and test scores doing that. Right. The more money we spend, the worse our kids do. The reason that the Department of Education is not in here, but the Tenth Amendment is, is because the founders understood, on some level, very primarily, much more primarily than we do, that this is not actually one country. It's actually, well, it was actually 13 countries, now it's 50 countries. Some people go, oh, that's crazy and old time. It's stupid. It's, it's genius. If you, abol if you abolish the Department of Education, what you end up with is 50 departments of education or actually even better, 300,000 departments of education where each individual school district is trying to find the best way to get the happiest, healthiest, <coughs> smartest kids who have the best set of skills to go out and compete in the world. Now, if you have one department of education that's being run by a bunch of pointy-headed intellectuals who don't understand, you know, how to open a jackknife, <laughs> then everybody in the country gets dumbed down to the level of that one idiotic Department of Education chairman. And the Department of Education monopolizes and standardizes this mediocrity and failure and institutionalizes it. Can't we all agree that if one person has an idea, if 300,000 other people were allowed to come up with their own ideas, can't we agree that it's at least somewhat likely that 300,000 people could come up with a better idea than this one guy? And if not, then we'll take that one guy's theory and apply it in 300,000 different places. But we all know that if we have independent school districts where everybody's trying everything different, some of these are gonna be massive failures, some of them are gonna be big successes. We'll be able to say, see what they're doing here in Massachusetts? This is kind of interesting. They started doing this program or vouchers or whatever it is, and test scores went up. Maybe we could take a little bit of that over here in Nevada, see how it works. Now you have different systems competing against each other, and it becomes the survival of the fittest. And one of the great things about this post-government future that I talked about in an information age economy is that we have to build these parallel structures to the existing federal government. So, I come from Los Angeles, the LA Unified School District is the biggest union in the, in the country. It's the worst schools in the country. And so what would be an example of a parallel structure to this existing, giant, stupid, bloated, fossilized dinosaur? Well, in education, a parallel structure would be homeschooling. Now maybe it's not the best possible alternative, but it's a good one. Homeschooled kids are doing much better and kids who are in awful public schools and better than most private school kids. Are. Now, homeschooling is a problem because, frankly, if you're homeschooling your kids, you're paying for their education twice. You're paying it out of your taxes to have it done at public schools that they're not attending anymore, and then you're paying for it as well to do it on your own. And furthermore, you've just given yourself another full-time job. Mm -hmm. But because of this information age economy that I was talking about with things like the internet, it starts to make more sense. Because now, rather than you having to spend five days a week teaching your children all of the subjects under the sun, you can get on the internet and find another person who's in your neighborhood, has the same beliefs as you, and wants a good education with kids the same age. And you can just teach sociology, or well, we're not going to teach sociology in you know, school, we're going to teach actual subjects. Uh, <laughs> you can teach physics, let's say, on Tuesday night. And Mrs. Johnson down the street could teach history on Thursdays, and your kids can go there, and their kids can go here, and it actually starts to make a certain kind of sense. And I just want to say one more thing about education and homeschooling, because it's a point I, I realized, and, and it's a minor thing, but it's a very important thing. The single, in my opinion, the single greatest American resource that is going untapped is not natural gas, and it's not shale oil, and it's not any of this stuff. The single great American reserve that is going untapped is our retired people. We have 
two or three generations of the most highly skilled, most beautifully trained, most motivated, hardworking, decent, good, experienced people who retire at age 65 and live another 20 or 30 years. I know many retired people, I know many people who enjoy being retired, but I've never seen a retired, I personally met a, a retired person who's completely fulfilled. If you think about the fact that we have two or three generations of children who've been utterly abandoned by the, by the education system, utterly, they, they can't add, they can't read, they don't know how to start a business or anything. When you have this gigantic unmet need on one hand and this enormous resource, a resource of hardworking, experienced, gifted people who would be blown away if they got paid $20 one night a week to teach their engineering class or whatever they were good at in real life, they would feel needed the kids would get the best personal one-on-one -on -one teacher under a tree with a slate and a piece of chalk education. It would change the world. It would cost nothing. Nothing. These are the kind of forward-thinking ideas that we Republicans are known, of, known for and proud of. And we are, we are, this is why we are going to own this country's mental space in 10 years. Because unlike these fossilized Democrat dinosaurs that are happy with failure so long as they get to maintain their control over other people, we actually care about our kids. We actually would like to see them succeed. We're ready to try anything that will improve these miserable, god-awful state-run uh, test scores. And this is just one of many solutions. And you know what? I don't have all the answers. The rest of these senators and congressmen don't either. But you do. So let's get them into the field. Let's see what works. If it works, we'll keep it. If it doesn't, let's throw it away. And instead of having a bad system that penalizes the kids of 300 million Americans, we have a bad system that maybe penalizes the kid of one kids in one little school district on the outskirts of Knoxville, Tennessee. That was a catastrophe. Okay, let's not do that again. Let's not <coughs> make the entire country go through that catastrophe and engrave in stone with union rules. It means these people can never be fired. The solutions are so simple, and they're so inexpensive, and they're so obvious. Yeah. You just have to get in front of them and put that big old R in front of them, because this is a Republican idea. Next question. Uh, gentlemen here.